In this video, I'm going to give a quick overview of how we think about simple linear regression. In particular, how do we think about predicting y using one explanatory variable, and we're imposing some linear functional form on the relationship. In the background, there's some random vector. This random vector compo is composed of three random variables. Now, y we call the response variable or we call it the dependent variable or the regressant. Uh, the x variable we call the explanatory variable, or we call it the independent variable, regressor, or predictor. Finally, this u random variable we call the error term. And so that's really kind of what's in the background of our, uh, our regression model. If you want to use the explanatory variable and just a linear function of this explanatory variable, as kind of a best prediction of the response variable. And we're going to use it in a linear relationship. So we're going to suppose that there's some linear relationship here. And if there's anything that's not linear, that's going to be accounted for in the error term. The error term's going to soak up the statistical difference. U can be really weird, but the relationship between X and Y, we're going to suppose is just this simple linear function. Beta zero, and beta 1, those are coefficients of our regression model. And we're thinking of those as constants. And they're unknown constants that we would like to estimate. The beta 0 coefficient is called the intercept. And the beta 1 coefficient is called the slope. So let's see what we can learn about the slope in this simple linear regression. It's just to ask ourselves, can we compute the covariance of x with y? But the only thing we know, given this regression model, is that y is a function and is this function of x and u. So let's just go ahead and plug that into this covariance statement. Because we can use a result to simplify this. The, this covariance of this sum of three terms is the sum of the covariance with each of those three terms. Now with this re-expressed as the sum of these covariance terms, we can see quite a bit more about what's going to happen. First term here, is the covariance of x with a constant. That covariance is 0. The second term is the covariance of x with beta 1 times x. Now, beta 1 is a constant, which means that we can bring it out of that expression. And what we're left with is we get beta 1 times the covariance of x with itself. Now, the covariance of x with itself is equal to the variance of that var random variable. So we can see that all of this reduces down to is that the covariance of x with y equals beta 1 times the variance of x plus this third term, which is the covariance of our regressor with the error term. So we get this change relationship between uh, beta 1 and covariances of x with the error term, variance of x, and covariance of x with y. Now it turns out that under some of the some under this assumption that this regression um, is the best line that we could use just using only x as our uh, variable to predict y, it turns out that that assumption implies that we get to strike out or that that assumption implies that covariance of x with u equals zero. So now all we have left is beta 1 times the variance of x equals the covariance of x with y. We could just divide by the variance of x. And now once we divide it by the variance of x, we have an expression for our slope coefficient in our regression model in terms of estimable features of the joint distribution of x and y. Before we get too excited about this expression, covariance of x with y over variance of x, we should make one sort of caveat to this. This is the population covariance of x with y. This is the population variance of x. And in practice, we won't be able to observe these directly. That we can't observe these, but we can compute something that should estimate it well uh, if we take our sample uh, appropriately, that is, if we take a random sample. It, a good estimate of this is the sample covariance of x with y over the variance of x. And so this is, uh, this is what we do when we run a regression of y on x. We use the sample analog to uh, what we actually derived under this little derivation in simple linear regression.
this this beta hat idea approximates this beta one idea, but it approximates it using all of the knowledge that we could possibly have in in our in our sample. So a final thing to note before I leave you with this video is that the beta one that we solved for in this derivation when we were trying to see what we were actually estimating when we think about a simple linear regression. This beta one is a constant. Covariance of x with y over variance of x is just a constant uh, and it's just some number. If I knew what x and y were, I could compute the covariance of x with y. If I knew what x is, I could compute its variance. Those are just numbers and when I plug those into this formula, I get a number out of it. When we go to estimate beta one, the constant, we think of estimating it with a statistic. Now this statistic varies from sample to sample. If I take a sample of 100 individuals from this population, it might be uh, the first 100 individuals, it might be the last 100 individuals, or it might be a whole bunch of different samples of size 100. There are a whole bunch of different ones of those, and which one I get is random if I take my sample as a random sample. So this idea of beta 1 hat is a random variable. It, it, I don't know what it's going to be in advance of actually taking my sample. Given a sample, I can compute it, but don't let that fool you. We don't think of beta 1 hat as a constant like we think of beta 1 as a constant. Beta 1 is the true value of the slope coefficient in the regression relationship. Beta 1 hat is our estimator of that true value. And we may estimate it really well given some samples. And we may estimate it really poorly given other samples. But the key idea is that there is variability from sample to sample. And that sampling variability means that beta 1 hat is a random variable. It's because it's a function of which sample we take, a function of the random sample, beta 1 hat is a random variable. It has some properties that are nice in that this random variable is a good approximation to this beta 1, uh, this beta 1 constant. So under some conditions, this beta 1 hat random variable will be unbiased for this beta 1 constant. Under other conditions, you could think of this beta 1 hat as having a nice normal distribution, which is going to be useful for conducting inference about statements about what is the true beta 1 out there. So ho hopefully this discussion of simple linear regression, sort of taking the population first approach, describing, um, describing what beta 1 is in terms of the joint distribution of this random vector that we're thinking about, that that gives you a different perspective on simple linear regression